most of the developing countries in the world have had a, a local economy, a lot of them would have, been, would have been, rather than based in manufacturing, probably would have been agricultural economies, um, subsistence economies. And uh, people work in small holdings, um, grown enough to, make, to help their family survive and being able to sell the surplus. And part of the difficulty is that um, international, global helpers come in with great ideas, you know. Uh, you know, and I can say, I mean, why are you growing poppies when you could be growing corn? Why are you growing um, maize when you should be growing barley? And all of these things, you know, just change local, um, I mean, generations and generations of local farming practice. And first of all, you know, it's about turnover. And once you decide, and we've had experience of this in Ireland, you want you to decide that you're going to move from that small holding that, you know, allows, say, something like a mixed crop um, farm. And I say, there's no point you really growing cabbage, and there's no point you really growing um, leeks or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Potatoes grow real quick, and they grow in any soil. So why don't you just grow potatoes? And suddenly as a result of that, people are finding, you know, I can grow potatoes, I can sell them, I can pay my rent. But I haven't got anything behind that. I have nothing to fall back on. But sometimes you're happy, you know, I mean, people get to the point where as long as the potato crop keeps coming, or the wheat keeps coming, or the barley, or the coffee keeps coming, um, that they can they can pay their rent, they can pay their landlord, their house is safe, they can ed, you know they can get their kids to school or whatever, um, and then a crop fails, and there's nothing to fall back on. The generations and generations and generations of farming tradition, that rotated crops and all the rest of it are gone, and you know eventually. Actually, the habit of doing that and the skill to do that is lost as well. And uh, and people, you know, move from small holding because now you know they maybe looking at global economy. Um, they don't you know you don't need to be growing potatoes because guess what? We've got this brand new way here to make money. You come into the city and you work in a factory and you make shirts, or you make cotton, or you make whatever it is. And there's, you know, as all of this is happening, that, that attachment of land is gone. The generations of skill has gone. And people are now in the studies in a, an environment completely alien to them. And suddenly you move from what was it, your own wee house on a small holding, to some tiny wee room in a big block where nobody knows anybody. And you're working in a factory and artificial light and somebody else dictates the time. And you know, your work isn't dictated by the weather and isn't, isn't dictated by the seasons. Um, it isn't dictated by the other work that you have to do. Um, it's dictated by the speed at which your employer wants you to work. And. Uh, it's, you know, it's not natural, but, you know, you have to do something to earn money to feed a family. And then suddenly they decide that the shirt that you're making, um, it's not that it's not good enough, but they can make 10 shirts in another town for the price of what they're paying you to make one shirt. And then suddenly the reason why you left the farm isn't there anymore, because you haven't got a factory. And that gets repeated up the line and up the line and up the line to the point where the factory that the 10 shirts are being made cheaper a few years later, we can get people in another country in the Far East or south of here or wherever to make 20 shirts for the price of what you were making 10 shirts for. And it just creates its own process of, of, of disempowerment and people of, of reliability of a multinational corporation who really at the end of it it's just about profit 
it's not about community, it's not about even care for workers, you know, it doesn't become any of that. And by the time we get to the third or fourth generation of people who originally were growing their own crop, now forgotten how to do it. There's no land for them to go back to, they probably sold it so they could move to the city. And that's why you end up with cities full of people who, two generations earlier, were farm workers, were woodcutters, were fishermen, were whatever they were. And suddenly now become reliant on a multinational corporation that had them on um, making shirts. I'm just using shirts as an example. Um, and again, you know, there's nothing, you can't go backwards. And that's the typical, you know, something good. A false, ex a false expectation, um, a dream maybe that people had to follow and, you know, go to America, come to America, you know, yeah, come to the city, come to the big city. And I'd eat you up and I'd spit you out. And when it's finished, you're left um, literally abandoned. And there isn't that family infrastructure to fall back on, there isn't a community infrastructure to, have to fall back on. Um, I, you know, if poverty was bad when you started, I think desolation and poverty and hopelessness as a result of maybe trying to follow a dream and lose them are probably worse. <laughs>